Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond however you're watching, welcome back to the dojo. I'm Reeve, he's H, we're back for more anime night in the dojo, and this is going to be Don Machi, season 3, episode 11, and, well, we're going to be finishing up the season today, well, in this recording session, it'll still be, you know, week to week <laughs> basis, but we're having super mega week starting, you know, on Wednesday, so, just so you know, uh, finishing up Shield Hero, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and finishing up uh, Kaguya-sama uh, Friday, Saturday. So, you know, a lot of dojo content Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week. Uh, and then Don Machi will be wrapping up next Monday, as per usual. And then we'll be starting new shows. But for today, Don Machi, uh, episode 11, season 3. Um, coming off last week, you know, we had all the ridiculous interactions with all the, or most of the women that Bell is associated with. And I just got to go into full popcorn mode. That was fun. Um, and we have a bunch of people punching above their weight class. I mean, Mikoto and uh, Welf are fighting Gareth, I believe is the dwarf's name. And uh, trying to freeze him. Ice Mage style. It's not really working great, but uh, they're doing it. Try to uh, create a distraction. During said distraction, Vinay has uh, wandered off somewhere. and uh... Once again, <laughs> trying to CC a dwarf usually isn't a great idea. Right, we went over the whole uh, dwarf archetype uh, last week, so yeah, trying to CC a dwarf, probably not going to happen. Um, and as I mentioned, VNA has wandered off, unfortunately, and uh, she has run into Tione, or Tiona, yeah, Tiona, I believe, uh, is the one she ran into. The two sisters, Tione and Tiona, one letter off, um, I believe it's uh, Tiona is the one she ran into, and well... Haruhime is off trying to intervene, I, I believe. Yeah, she took off, and Bell knows. So we speculated on who's going to show up first, how that's going to go down. So they got two episodes to wrap this up, however they're going to wrap it up, and, you know, should be it should be interesting, but last episode was pretty solid. Um, I expect this to be a pretty, uh, pretty good penultimate episode, if you will. So... Yeah, that's where we're at. Should be interesting. You uh, got anything you wanted to say going into this one, Age? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we pretty much talked it all out last week, so if you haven't seen that, go check that out. Uh, yeah, here's hoping to a reasonably strong end to the season, because uh, this has been pretty good for the most part this season, but uh, we'll talk about that later. But either way... Um, Let's push some buttons and see what happens here in episode 11, shall we? So, here goes something. I was gonna say, is that the same little girl as last time? Nope, thank you, flashback. <laughs> that didn't matter to Bell. He rescued me anyway. Take a look. <laughs> Told ya, still alive. Yeah, dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> There's nowhere left to run. <laughs> when that Vuiva rampages again, will you be able to defend its actions? <sighs> Because I certainly couldn't. <laughs> that was outside interference? Yeah, that was kind of dicks, being a dick. <laughs> You've gotten a lot stronger. I can't go easy on you anymore. The thing is, Bell can be totally unfair. He overworks himself, and he's always a big show-off. Especially when it comes to a damsel in distress. And well, he can't turn his back on family. Something, 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 Zeus's grandson, something, something. are a part of his precious family. He wouldn't have it any other way. Goddess, I want to be by Belle's side. I can't let it end this way. They said that one of their comrades, a black minotaur, gave it to them. If I had to guess, it's the same one Fallen Once or whatever fought earlier. 
Did you say a black yeah. guitar? Anyhow, they're on their way to the Asterius had a spare after he squashed dicks. Yeah. <laughs> He's not a jackass. Yes, Lady Hestia. Master Fells and the Xenos know. They're relieved to hear that Lady Vene's safe. And I got him into the secret passageway without any problems. Well, that's that. And well, that sure was a interesting stinger, but we'll get to that in a little bit here. So... Tiona is apparently a bleeding heart, but, I mean, as we all know, actions, for the most part, speak louder than words, and being a saving that kid, not attacking her, if a Vivra was attacking a child like that, uh, hi, one slash, and, you know, the kid's dead. So, uh, these adventurers kind of pants on head over here. Um, at least Tiona was able to see what the hell was going on there, and that's why she let her go. Bleeding heart and all that. Yeah. Interesting. But, yeah, uh... I action speak louder than words situation even knowing that she was being pursued being a still stopped to defend the kid rather than just continuing to run right so you're not just going to do that in hopes that your pursuer will be like oh you went out of your way to save that kid i'm gonna let you go no she just did it because it was the right thing to do um so that was interesting I believe we now know why Welf only made four swords in five days, because he spent two days on this one. <laughs> <laughs> he, he needed to have an ace in the hole. He needed to have functionality and power, and then he needed to have that ace in the hole that, you know, goes full, like, you know, uh, Captain Hitsugaya from Bleach. <laughs> so, uh, there's that. Um... So that was interesting. I believe this is the first time we got introduced to Hephaestus' other, um, like, apprentice. Yeah, this is the first, like, other member of Hephaestus' familia we've been introduced to, but I immediately recognized her because she's in the friggin' yeah. OP as part of Hephaestus' group. Yeah, I, I was wondering when she was going to show up. I was thinking to myself, just going to show her and not ever use her, which... Based on what we saw right there, Gareth is at least level 5. Bare minimum. Yeah. Just like the majority of the Loki familiar, if not level 6. So she was able to, you know, at least fight him to a draw reasonably right there. So she has to be much higher level than Welf is. She's probably at least level 4. Um, She's at least like high 3, low 4. Yeah. Places familiar in general, though, is relatively low combat level because they're a, a craftsman familiar primarily. Right. But they, they finally got past the dwarf racial. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> he was still cracking the ice even a little bit right there with his super pissed off face. So uh, it took a literal building of ice to uh, finally, you know, crowd control the dwarf. Big shock. <laughs> so that was impressive. We got to see her, um, whether we get to see more of her in the last episode, maybe, probably more of a next season thing, I'd assume. They can't, it'd be weird if they introduced her as a character and then didn't do anything with her in the future. Well, next episode will probably be primarily the resolving whatever's going on with Hermes in the tunnel and then free and just wrapping up the season with like bringing in Miok and, uh, Hephaestus and Take and all of them and just trying to kind of like basically assess the damages. Right. So, uh, Haruhime really, uh, was trying to punch above her weight class there. The real question is, is, was the spell that she was casting right there an That's actual her. spell, or was that her just knowing that Aisha was around and she was just making a spectacle of it? Well, that's... No, that that was the the level boost spell. She just knew Aisha was coming. Yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> but that was as uh, spectacally as we've seen the level boost spell. So it's like, she trying to cast some sort of, like, binding spell on Mr. Beta over here, or what? <laughs> Yeah, no, as far as we know, that's the only spell she knows. Right. Which, uh, as we saw, apparently that level boost for Aisha was not enough to uh, even put a dent in Mr. Bet, as uh, Bell calls him. <laughs> yeah, friggin... 
he's at least level five because he's like basically the second to eyes person in Loki. Right. The other thing I guess they did show off in this was um, we did see a little bit last episode with Gareth fighting uh, Mikato and uh, Welf, but uh, apparently if you're high enough level and or, you know, in Mr. Bet's case here, sense of smell, um, the invisibility cloaks aren't much use. Yeah, oh. there's ways to passive perception being high enough to still sense invisible people or in his case since he has animalistic traits sense of smell because yeah you're all you're doing is camouflaging yourself from the eye other sense you could still be heard or smelled or, or bumped into right so that's interesting but it's still obviously better to use that to hide yourself from the lower lower level adventures you know rather than not doing it you know what i mean so yeah, the, the higher level guys can't see you, but, you know, you'd rather only have them see you than, you know, every other, you know, lobby on the street that can be like, hey, they're running that it, way. <laughs> it, is, it is also worth noting that, like, the higher level adventurers, while they can't, they can't actually see you per se, they can just sense that generally, like, oh, there's a hostile in this direction kind of right. thing. I mean, we saw it with eyes, you know, confronting Belle. She knew it was Belle, but she specifically said, she's with you, isn't she? As in, I know she's there, but I can't, you know, see her kind of deal. Yeah. All she knew is there was someone invisible in front of her, and simple deduction would be that it would be Belle with V&A. Right. Which, uh, I guess, uh... Even though uh, Ryu put up a good fight, she, uh, I guess, uh, you know, Eyes is still more talented at this point. As she pointed out, five yeah. years was enough for her to uh, surpass her uh, skill-wise, which, as we've seen, level boosts don't, you know, equal out to actual talent, so. Yeah. Uh, which it does imply that they have actually and compared each other in the past like they fought or something like that right but uh that was probably as Ryu as a uh, Ryu's actual like uh, old identity which uh, lost your familia and all that right which is that's another thing that's still on the table probably at some point in the future because they brought up the um I forget what they're called, but... Uh, e Evilus. Evilus, yeah, Evilus. They brought that up several times this season, so there's... It'd be weird if they didn't do anything with it in the future. Obviously, it's not happening in the last episode, obviously, but, uh, you know, in the future, I'm sure we'll get uh, Ryu's backstory and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, this this confrontation and fight was solid. Um, I'm kind of surprised Eyes back down at the end there, but it took a very, very extreme... Uh, show of, you know, how Vina felt to, you know, get her to back down. I mean, she ripped her claws and wing off. And, I mean, at that point, there's probably very few members of even the Loki Familia that would probably have still attacked at that point. I assume Bet would have still attacked. Gareth, probably, and Finn. Those three were probably on the list. Tione, maybe. Um, she's probably at least somewhat similar to her sister, unless right. they're going for the polar opposites thing. But yeah, we've eyes like as much as she is prejudiced against monsters, is still a relatively good person. So uh, while her standards are fairly high, she's still not going to just murder VNA in cold blood. Right. So you know, Loki's familiar. Once we get to the side series, which will be coming up here shortly, um, we'll get to see more about them. But it's probably safe to assume from what we've seen that about half the Familia in this specific situation probably still would have just, they wouldn't have cared because reasons that will probably be shown in the side series. But, uh, you know, even, we even talked about this before where um, Loki herself, you know, even at that meeting and just wanting to talk to Belle, she wants to know what's going on and she probably wouldn't really care about the uh, Xenos in general. But, you know, her familia yeah. is completely different. Kind of like how Ecolos's familia just kind of did whatever they wanted and he didn't really care. He just wanted to watch the world burn, basically. 
yeah once so, again though like the the god of the familia is more just like a guiding leader than an actual leader the familia will still do whatever the hell they want we've seen right. that in countless times now at this point where yeah. a bunch of the familia members will literally just do whatever the hell they feel like right the obvious major case being the soma familia <laughs> yeah but even with like freaking ishtar and stuff like that we've seen plenty of cases where what's her face uh Trine would still just do whatever the hell that she felt like. Yep. So. Well, ultimately, really, all the god can do about their familia members is rescind their blessing. Right. But that's nothing to stop that adventurer from just turning and just going to a different familia and getting a new blessing. Right. They don't just suddenly lose all their stats or anything like that. Right. They just, uh, you know, have to basically switch teams. You know. So... Anyway, that was that was interesting. Um, you know, shows of uh, trust or whatever you want to call that are uh, you know fairly powerful and stuff like that. And if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. And you know, at the very least, eyes would be able to see reason. So that worked out for them there. Um, obviously, we'll probably get more to her backstory in the side series uh, since that does exist and is a thing. So maybe uh, the side series will shed more light on. Pretty much the entirety of the Loki Familia is the point of that series, so yeah, it'll be interesting it, to see what they do with that. I know it's supposed to shed quite a bit more light on Finn's character, and that's like one of the main things we're apparently missing out on by having not watched it yet. Right. But obviously we're going to get at least a fair bit of eyes, seeing as she's the main character of it. Yeah, I mean, considering it's a side series, just to talk about that for a minute here, um, I'd assume it's going to be more about the... Uh, the secondary characters like uh, Beta and Gareth and Finn, um, but they probably still will have to give at least a little bit of time to eyes, even if it would make more sense to put it in the main show. They're probably just, it's one of those things where people assume if you're a fan of this show, you'll probably watch the side series to get more information on, in this case, the Loki Familia. You know what I mean? So. Which, once again, the side series has been on our list to watch at some point. We just haven't got around to it at this point. Haven't got around to it yet. And at this point, we're just kind of like, well, now we're genuinely missing out on stuff for not having watched it. So we need to get up, prioritize it. Right. And hopefully watching it between season two and, or uh, season, sorry, season three and season four, because we don't know when the dumb's going to come out. So we're just going to put uh, the side series into the Monday slot for the moment. Um Hopefully that'll help shed light on what could potentially be happening in Season 4, because, well, Season 4's beginning story completely hinges on what the hell Hermes is doing. <laughs> Which I was saying, uh, in between us watching the episode and starting the discussion, but, like, something is up here. Not only is this a weird turn for Hermes's character if this is like actually him doing it but also once again Asterius apparently confirmed to the others that this is an entrance and that he's used it in the past so something's up here well that that's the thing that I was going to point out was when was Asterius coming to the surface in the past. You know what I mean? When yeah, would he have done that? Yeah, we don't know. It's either something about Asterius' info was wrong. I mean, so they I had the item. This. You know what I mean? They had the, you know, the, um, uh, Daedalus, uh, whatever you want to call it, orb that, you know, opens the Orchalcum doors. So, you know, they would know if it was fake. So, the real question is, for me, is they specifically mention that Asterius used this to come to the surface. You know what I mean? What? When When was he doing that? You know? Even if, let's say he's, say from the last time that we assume he's the, the Minotaur from Season 1. Okay? So let's just safely assume that's him. Uh, how long has he been sentient that he's even... Leto points out that he's down in the 
lower depths of the dungeon grinding out and getting swole and buff and super awesome. So shredded. when yeah, getting shredded, you know, pick your adjective. So when would he be coming to the surface and why? As a Asterius, you know what I mean? It's possible he might retain some memories from uh, his previous life as well, because we've seen that the Xenos, a lot of the Xenos do. Uh, so he, it could be him remembering that, which leads into what I suspect that this probably is, is this is probably a Freya play. It could be, yeah. I mean, Freya potentially already knows about this entrance, and that could have been what the whole thing of when she had uh, Oter or Otter or whatever his freaking name is abduct Asterius in the first place to use against Bell could have potentially got in through this entrance, grabbed him, pulled him back to the tower, and then beat him into submission and then set him loose on Bell. Right. But yeah, th this is a weird turn for Hermes because every from everything we've seen, he's been working with them. So unless this is like... They're going full M. Night Shyamalan. What a twist. Hermes was a bad guy the whole time. He's been playing the long game for three full seasons, basically. So, then. so the thing is, I don't necessarily... If this is actually Hermes and there's like no special twists or anything to it, it literally just legitimately is Hermes just hates the Xenos. I wouldn't necessarily... I'd say that's a weird direction for them to take his character, but I wouldn't say it's totally out of character. Because and it wouldn't necessarily mean he's a villain per se, because the whole thing is he has to work, he has to obey Uranus, and Uranus pulled him in immediately. But also, his whole goal is to complete Zeus's quest against the monsters by like slaying the black dragon and stuff like that. So it's entirely possible he still just has a serious hatred for any and all monster kind. Right. So it'll be interesting to see if this is a Freya play. Um, like you said, it, it wouldn't be completely out of character for him. It's just... It'd just be a weird direction. It's just kind of a weird direction based on the fact that if he wanted to do something about the Xenos before, why go through all this shit, you know, having been a rampage through the surface, the, the rescue operation, all that, when he could have just dealt with them, you know, like when Dix was still around and just had sided with Dix and then just taking them out then. You know what I mean? So the only thing I can really think about that is the think of that is just once again, he has to obey Uranus. So like it could have just had been a matter of obfuscation of this was the first opportunity he could guarantee that Uranus wouldn't find out. I suppose. Um, but as far as I know, I thought um, Fells was like in permanent contact with Uranus. So wouldn't he just know, like right now? <laughs> uh, well, so the thing with that was it's Fells is a little like orbs is all it was. So like if some, if uh, Hermes has some way to stop that, then Fells could be kept from contacting Uranus. Fair enough. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. It's just kind of weird. You know, like you said, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, whatever happens with this Hermes play, however it turns out, could have a big bearing on how season four starts, or if this is just going to be like, okay, this is done, and then they'll be, you know, introducing something new and exciting for season four um, in the early episodes. But yeah, and it was another solid episode. No real complaints. The action sequences were great. Um, you know, VNA's just like show of, you know, love and trust for Bell getting through the eyes, that was a thing. Um But we'll we'll see what happens. I mean we speculated that Asterius could still be around, but who knows if he's been abducted by uh Otar or just the Freya yeah, Familia in general at this point. Um That's the main reason why I mentioned the whole thing of like it could have been false something or other by Asterius. Um, is because like the last thing we saw of Asterius was him with like his arm still cut off and he was like in the armory or something like that and someone was approaching him. Right. And we know Otar is out here doing something. So one of the things I suspect could be happening is that Otar abducted Asterius 
and then they either somehow got Asterius to comply and give false information to the uh, to the other Xenos, or it was just a fake Asterius the whole time, and they just got the actual eye from the real Asterius and gave it to the fake. Right, because one would assume Lily's not the only one with really good illusion magic out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> you you got to figure Freya's Femoia has several that we haven't seen that can do something, at bare minimum one. You know what I mean? It can't just be Lily, you know? So we'll, uh, we'll have to see what happens with that, but interesting twist if they want to go this direction okay but it is just a little weird but hey he is time to explain himself in the season finale so that's what we just gotta wait for which we'll be jumping into literally in like five minutes here so <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah should be a fairly interesting season finale i think so uh basically all i got for this one you got anything else age other than it's really hot and I'm melting. <laughs> it's actually a bit cooler here to, here today. It's only 86. Lucky bastard. <laughs> uh... I don't think so. Alrighty then. Well, then ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond however you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here for another uh, episode of Anime Night in the Dojo. And this was Don Machi, Season 3, Episode 11. And we're going to roll right into the season finale, but you guys won't be seeing that till next week. But, you know, we're going to do it right now. So uh, have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you to watch. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. <laughs>